Now, in this lesson, we're going to be studying quadratics. Now, that's a name we could have played hangman with. Who thinks they can spell quadratic? Go ahead. Quad. Q U A. Q U A. Yeah. <laughs> okay, quadratics. Now, quadratic means it's got a power of two. It's an unknown or variable raised to a power of two. So, in a sense, not in a sense, we have been dealing with quadratics all the way along. We've been factoring quadratics. We've been completing the square of quadratics. We've been doing the difference of two squares, which is a quadratic. And we've been finding different ways to solve for the unknown. But we've done difference of two squares, completing the square, factoring. But in algebra, and I hope you'll keep this in mind, you can always replace numbers in algebra because we don't know what letter pick a number. But what we're doing is we're trying to find something that's true for all numbers and doesn't just work for certain ones. The difference of squares only works for one kind of problem. And perfect squares only works for one kind of problem. What we're going to use today is what we know about completing the square to find a formula for all quadratics. And this is going to be, this is the kind of stuff that teachers really like. And I hope that you'll enjoy it too, but you might zone out a little bit. But I know the quadratic formula. Negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac over 2a. Now, I don't expect you to know that. But... I'd like it if you could find it on your own, even if you forget the quadratic formula. So the first thing we're going to do is recognize that we have three coefficients. We've got an a, a b, and a c. If we had 2x squared plus 7x plus 12, what's the a? a would be the 2. What's the b? 7. Seven. What's the c? Twelve. Very good. And we also know that the first thing we would do if we had an equation like this and we were going to complete the square is do what? Who remembers this? We're going to divide through by 2 because we're more comfortable if we have x squared by itself for completing the square. So instead of dividing through by 2, we're going to divide through by a. Okay. Now the second thing we're going to do, if you complete the square, what do you do to find the third term? Do you remember what we did? Like if you had x squared, let's say we divide through by 2, and we had 7 halves x, and we move the 12 over here, well, how do we find this third term right here? Remember, you cut this in half and then square it? So, so what we're going to do is we're going to do exactly the same thing that we've been doing, except instead of using numbers and dividing by 2 and then taking 7 halves and making 49 fourths and all that kind of thing, we're going to use the letters. And it's going to get a little cumbersome, but it ends up coming up with the exact same thing that we've been doing except with letters. So the first thing we're going to do is divide through by what? A. a. When you divide through by A to all of these, now you've got x squared by itself. That was the objective. Plus B over A times x plus C over A equals 0. When we complete the square, unless this is a perfect square of that, which it doesn't look like it, we have to move this on this side. So we're going to put the CA over here, leave that blank, negative C over A, because you subtracted C over A from both sides. I, I hope that you're already starting to do this kind of thing, because you could put minus CA on both sides, but pretty soon you'll figure this out. You're just going to subtract the opposite, right? Opposite side, opposite sign. So I subtract the CA. Now I've got to find what's half of B over A. If I multiplied 1 half times this whole thing here, what would I get? B over 2A. B over 2A. But what I want to do is take half of it and then square it. So B over 2A squared would be B squared over 4a squared, because I square the 2 and I square the a. But I can't add it to one side without adding it to both sides. So I have b squared over 4a squared over here. The thing about this side is, though, I've got fractions over here now, right? And if I want to combine those two terms, and let's just do two things at the same time on both sides. First of all, we know this is now x plus b 
over 2a, the whole quantity squared. If you were to square this, you would get x squared, you'd get b squared over 4a squared, and you'd get this times this, and doubled would give you that. Okay, you remember that from completing the square. But we can't add an a and a 4a squared, so we've got to multiply this denominator times what to make it the same as that denominator? Just 4a, because we've already got 1a, right? So if we multiply them both by a 4, that works. And then we multiply them both by an a, this is a to the 1, they become a to the 2, and we'll put the a here for right now. Now we could put those together, and we'd have 4ac plus b squared, but I'm going to turn it around and put the positive first, b squared minus 4ac. In the book it might be reversed, it's the same thing over 4a squared. See that okay? Now this looks a little cumbersome, but all we're doing is the same thing to the right that we're doing to the left. Now how do we solve for x? That's the, that's the goal. How do we get x by itself? Oh, not divide. Square root. So we take the square root of both sides and we get x plus b over 2a all by himself. And over here, if you've got the square root of this over the square root of that, which is the same thing, what is the square root of 4a squared? What times what will give you 4? 2a. And a squared would be a. So you could take this on top. You have b squared minus 4ac, the whole thing over 2a. And because it's the square root, it could be positive or it could be negative, right? Because either one would give you that answer. Are we almost done? We've got one step left. We've got to move the b over 2a over to this side. So when we do that, this becomes negative over here. So and you can only do this if you have a dry marker board. Negative b over 2a 